Hey fellas, uh, welcome to part two of the HO229 diorama base build. Uh, more of a base, not, I wouldn't necessarily call it a diorama. But um, it's part two, we actually build the base. Now keep in mind when you watch this, I act like I know what I'm talking about. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but I'm like real confident, like, oh yeah, this is how you do this stuff. I, I don't know, I just kind of... I just kind of do do it. I, I don't really know what I'm I'm talking about as far as like diorama base stuff. So I just kind of do what works um, for me. What what looks good and sometimes it turns out, sometimes it doesn't. I think this one turned out pretty well though. I'm I'm happy with it. Um, you know, it's it gives me a newfound respect for for those guys that like really put those like really intricate dioramas and and. Uh, you know, you watch those guys that build, like, scenes with trees and woods and, oh my gosh, it's not easy. Definitely not easy. So, hopefully I turned out something that the customer likes. I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. But, um, I, this is a really long video. I cut a bunch of stuff out of it just to try to compress it. I don't think there was enough material to make two different videos, but, uh, there was... So much material it made it really long so i will quit talking i want to keep this under two minutes this little intro and uh, we'll get on with the base it's a 15 inch by 30 inch base so it's really big and um so i'll quit yapping uh, let's go take a look at what i did um as you can see i've got got uh, the area marked off what i want to do now i was going to make some really big squares but uh i think that's just going to look a little out of out of scale for what we're doing and the owner had sent me this uh, pre-made. It's almost like a, a photo on top of a a little bitty or a, a real thin piece of, I don't know if this is wood or what this is. But uh, this is like a pre-made base and it's in 148 scale. So what I've done is I've just increased it, increased the little squares. And I'm going to use this kind of motif. It might make a little more sense turn this way. Um, but I've got some cork board, and you can get this just about anywhere. Uh, I think Walmart has it, even our local Walgreens has it, but it's just cork that you put on the wall and you can, you know, stick pins and stuff on. I've got some on my back wall here. <clears throat> so I've cut some squares, four inch squares out of this. And what I'm going to use to glue these down is this Gorilla Wood Glue. Now this stuff is really powerful. And, uh... Since I've got the natural material in the cork and then the MDF, I think this is going to really hold this down. I don't want to use like regular um, school glue or white glue because it's just not going to give me the bond that I need. And I think this is going to this is going to be perfect. Now for the cork board, I've got uh, I've got just about as many as I need. I'm going to have to have a few extra, and <laughs> I I found just enough cork board. I didn't have to go out and buy any. Uh, to cut out these squares so I got just enough. And let me shut the camera off and I'll get my cork out here and show you how I'm doing this. Because it there is a little bit of a trick to it. All right, now I'm gonna cut some. These aren't gonna be exactly four inch square like the other ones. These are gonna be like the end pieces I'm gonna have to cut off and, and I don't need a full size piece. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've just marked off the uh, the four inches and I'm taking my X-Acto blade and I'll come through and it is, it's not the easiest stuff to cut, but you can get it done in one swipe, okay? And it just comes off just like that. Now you can see I've got a B on here now. I'm just marking the bottom so I don't get confused because I'm gonna round off the edges. So I've got my piece of cork board here and this is gonna be the top. And uh, like I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, I've got just enough full-size pieces that I need. Now these are going to be edge pieces, so I'm going to be cutting them and uh, and trimming them because they're just going to fit like maybe this corner piece right here. So I don't need a full-size piece. But what I've been doing is I go onto the top, or I take the top, and I've got a real coarse sanding block here, and you can use a file. And I'm just going to come in here. And I'm just going to round off these top edges, round off the corners. It doesn't take much. Rough them up. They don't have to be perfect because it is going to be like a concrete or asphalt type surface. Just like so. Okay, so I'm going to pull out some pieces here. 
And I didn't get these all evenly cut. So that might be a little bit of an issue, but it'll be okay. Um, I've got my crack, one of my cracked pieces up here. And I'm just going to plan this out. So I'm only going to do a few squares at a time. And I've already got one glued down just to start off to make sure everything was copacetic. So I've glued this one down with wood glue. I put some pressure on it with some books. Um, I've also got some spare boards out here that I'm going to put down. So I'll, I'll lay these out like so. I'll glue them down and then I'll take my boards, put them on here, and then I'll lay some heavy books on top. And then it usually takes about, I don't know, half an hour or so, and this stuff will dry. And, and this has been down for about a half an hour or maybe a little bit longer. And it is nice and stuck down there. It's not going to come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these over. And I'm going to take some of my wood glue. Spread it on here. Okay, so I think that will work. Most likely. So I'm going to put my boards here. And then my other one here. And then we'll take my books got some heavy books and I'm going to put them on here for the next half an hour and come back and they should be set. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, now that I've got these all laid down, they're on there nice and snug. The only way you're getting those off is to sand, sand them off with an electric sander. So they're on there nice and tight. Now, this cork board's really good if, if uh, you're going for an asphalt look, but what I want to go for is the concrete. And how I'm going to do that, let's get this off here real quick. Uh, how I'm going to accomplish that is I'm going to take some Mod, Pod, Mod Podge right here, and this is matte. And I'm going to create a real thick textured coating to fill in the little crevices and stuff, uh, at least a lot of the little crevices. I don't necessarily want to fill in all of them. Uh, and I'm going to take some baking soda, mix that in there. Okay. And then I'm going to take some little, uh, this is like decorative sand you would get at Walmart or like the dollar store. It's pretty fine. It's not the finest stuff. I have a, a bunch of different, uh, I guess you would call granule sizes of sand, but I'm just picking this one. And we're going to go ahead and mix this all up. I'll probably end up adding some more baking soda, but I want a thick mixture. And this Mod Podge is a lot like glue, but it's a sealer as well. Basically, I think it's basically white glue. Now, somebody commented before that uh, it's got a, some different stuff in it than just normal PVA glue, but 
I don't know that that's the case. I think they're just being silly. Okay. And I can always thin this out with water if I wanted to. But I'm going to mix this real well. Just like so. <clears throat> now, I have no formal training in diorama making, but I uh, I do try a lot of stuff when I make dioramas. I, I just try a bunch of different stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This up here. Sounds like my kid's having a good time. So I'm just going to take this Mod Podge mixture and I'm just going to start coating this. And I'm going to get it down in the crevices. Oh, my kid's having a real good time. Just like so. Now this real this this will shrink. Shrink a little bit. Well, I'll shrink a lot, probably. Okay. Now, if I get brush marks, it's going to be okay. But I can also smooth this out as well. I've just got some plastic card here. And I can come in here and I can make, like, concrete marks in it like you would see in uh, concrete that's been laid down. Man, they're being loud upstairs. It's in the evening. I don't typically work in the evening because it's usually family fun time, but my kids got a friend over and they're baking a cake. So I'm baking my own kind of special modeling cake down here called a diorama. Okay, so I'm just gonna get on laying this thickened, mixture up and then as it starts to dry I'll run this along here and make the marks that I want hopefully they show up when it dries I don't know we'll see but that's all that's all I'm doing right now and then uh, once this dries and we'll come back and take a look at it I can repeat it if I need to and uh, we'll just go from there. All right, fellas, we're out here. I just got the second coat of Mod Podge and baking soda mixture on. And I think I'm going to be happy with this. It's, it's really hard to tell what it's going to look like. When this dries, it dries somewhat clear. It does have the baking soda in there, so there's going to be a little bit of white left. But uh, I'm not really going to know exactly how it looks until I get primer on it but I think this is going to turn out pretty well. Now, in some of these creases, um, I, I did add a little bit more because the when the Mod Podge shrinks up, uh, there, it formed a lot of voids. Now, I am going to fill some of these areas with some, like, grass and moss, but uh, I went ahead and filled in the big voids, and we'll see what it looks like when, I'm, when, uh, when it dries, see if I need to fill in any more, some spot filling. But overall, uh, I think I'm headed in the right direction. Now you can see this corner right here, the owner wanted this filled in with a, uh, it looked like pavers that they would, I guess, bring in and throw down on, on grass or dirt and would allow them a, a, a hard surface. And they're somewhat unusual, and I'll show a picture. Let's go back to my office and we'll, uh, We'll look at a couple pictures. All right, so what I'm going to be filling in the corner with are these little pavers, and I'm going to have to cut these out myself. But we'll take a look at what I'm talking about. I don't know much about these. These are some of the only pictures I found. The owner sent me a couple more pictures via email of what he was talking about, and I'd never seen or heard of these. So if somebody else is familiar with these and knows exactly what they are, uh, let me know. I assume they're made out of like a concrete. Uh, that would be my guess. But uh, they look like little octagonal sections with, with holes in them. And there's some right along here, right along the edge of this, like either dirt or concrete area. And I assume that they, they place those down to make uh, makeshift taxiways or parking areas where the, the planes wouldn't get stuck in mud. 
Uh, here's a little bit better look uh, of them. You can see the perforation, all the little holes. And uh, they do somewhat conform to the surface. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut out octagonal sections. Now this is like a PVC perforated sheet that I got from Amazon for like 16 bucks. It was 12 by 12. And it is rather thick. It's out of scale as far as the thickness goes. But um, when I lay down my glue and whatever I mix my glue with, with either baking soda or sawdust or something like that, uh, you're not really going to be able to notice the uh, the thickness because I'm going to somewhat submerge this in that so you only see the top of this. And then I'll... Uh, I'll probably put grass and stuff on the inside of these and, and you know, we'll, we'll play with it a little bit. Now, I've got a section cut out here that will fit right along that corner minus a piece over here. Now, I could just lay this down, but I really want it to have a little bit more realism and I want it to conform to uh, a not necessarily a flat surface with, you know, with them laying it down on the dirt. So I'm going to take the time, and it's going to be painstaking, to cut out little octagonal sections like this. And since this is PVC, you can, you can cut it with, with an exact, or um, with uh, sprue cutters, just like so. So it's going to be a bit of a pain, because I am going to have to come along and <laughs> map out each one of these, and then uh, go ahead and cut it. So... That's what I'm going to end up doing. I'll, uh, I'm going to draw all my little octagonal pieces and then uh, just go along and cut each one out and then we'll uh, start laying them down. All right, fellas, we're gonna freestyle it. Now, I took a rattle can, or a spray can, and uh, it didn't really matter what color, but I had some flat uh, green that I used to prime it. I didn't wanna waste my good primer on such a large piece when it's really not necessary. So we'll look at some of the texture that we've got. You can see some of these little areas where I had spread it with the, uh, with the plastic card, and then some of the areas that didn't get it and it kind of looks like old, somewhat crumbly concrete. I try to keep everything in focus. But there is what it looks like. And I, I think that's going to look really cool. Now, you, can't re you couldn't really tell before I primed it. So throwing the primer on really does let you know how your work's coming along. <laughs> and so if, if, the, if I want to do alterations and fill in some of these, these areas, which I don't think I want to, I really like the look of of the way some of this cork board on the bottom is showing through kind of like just old nasty concrete. Um, but now would be the time to, to adjust and, and maybe put some more down if you didn't like that look. Uh, here are my uh, little pavers that I made. And uh, you can see some of them are, are uh, a little off and that's, that's kind of the look that I was going for. Uh, you know, with the ground not being completely even, and some of them are sticking up just a little bit more than others. Now, what you see here is the sand and Mod Podge mixture that I've got in between the crevices and right along the edge here. Now, some of these had, had broken off. Uh, it was just really difficult to do, and I thought, well, you know, I'll just, instead of, like, replacing them, I'll just um, fill that in with sand like... Uh, like like some of them were just missing so and you don't really know what's beyond this point anyway so uh, I think that kind of adds a little bit more more uh, interest to just having this whole thing covered but uh, in fact I could have popped one or two out here but I don't know I think it'll be okay but there we go that's what it looks like now what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to do some pre-shading and I'm going to take black and I'm going to come along and spray uh, black right along the creases. Um, maybe in some of these areas, I'm not sure about what I'm gonna do here as far as pre-shading goes. And then I may take some white or some tans, uh, maybe some browns and do some more different pre-shading, but I'll flash up some pictures as I go along rather than, you know, just, just um, you know, filming it, taking up a lot of film time. So uh, I'm gonna get on with that and uh, see you in a bit.
All right, as you can see, I've got my base colors down. And uh, just for the, for the concrete, it was a mixture of some tans and grays and, um, you know, just a, a light coat. And then for the, uh, the pavers, I used uh, like a sand color. And once that was down, then I, th I threw a coat of, uh, of Future down to protect it. Now, keep in mind, I, I did have, since I used a rattle can, uh, Mineral Spirits will wipe that away. So um, I did put a coat of Future on there to protect it because most of my work now is going to be oil paint and um, pigments. So basically what I'm doing now is I've got a, a brownish, a dark brown. I'm actually using engine grease for this. And uh, I'm just coming in with a wash and I'm dirtying up where these pavers are. And I'm gonna be adding grass to this as well in certain spots. So uh, I don't have to go in and paint in between all these because I wanna keep my pavers that sand color. So I'm opting to use this wash and that way you know, once I get it all in there, I can come in with, with a paper towel and I can just wipe away the pavers. Now it is gonna discolor them just a little bit, but that's okay. And then uh, if I wanna take more off, I can get it, if I wanna get in there real fine, I can take a Q-tip and dip it in some mineral spirits and, uh, and clean up those pavers. And as far as like this, this rocky area, which is gonna be dirt, I'm just taking some of this with a little bit thicker than a wash and I'm coming in here and painting this and I'm gonna cover a lot of this up with, with grass so it's not gonna be that big of an issue if it's, if it's uh, not all covered. But uh, I do wanna cover it, like see down here, I'll go ahead and add a little bit here. If, I, if the wash isn't going on thick enough, I'll just take some actual oil paint, put it in there. And because I have a gloss coat on here, I'll be able to wipe away a little bit easier what, uh, what I don't want. And I will probably cover a lot of this on the edge with grass. Now I'm not gonna go too crazy with the grass because I do have to ship this and, um, and packaging it with grass on it. And this big heavy piece is going to be um, it's just going to make it more difficult to package it and send it safely if I've got grass everywhere. So, but I am going to put it strategically in some places. But this is all there is to it. And once I get this down and then get uh, my pavers and stuff wiped away and cleaned up the way I want them, then uh, I'll go over the top, the concrete with a, a dark wash. I think I'll probably use smoke for that, real diluted, just to bring out all those little uh, details that I added with the Mod Podge and um, uh, baking soda to make that concrete type look. It's really gonna make those, bring those out. And then once that's done, I'll flat coat it and then we'll go in with some more oil work and some pigments. So here's what it looks like with the uh, excess wash wiped off and I've got a flat coat on there. You can really see how that, uh, that dark colored wash really brought out all that concrete detail that I added. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, back here, I mean, these, this wasn't <laughs> easy to do. I had to go in there and carefully, uh, you know, wipe off the excess wash that I had in there. I also used some of this dark earth pigment that I added, and I may come back and add some more pigments uh, later once I get the, the grass in, but I do have some like grass and moss that the guy had sent me in a big package of like uh, cool stuff. So I'm gonna add some of this as well, but right now I'm gonna add some uh, oil stains. Now that I got a flat coat on there, uh, now I'm gonna do some um, different washes, maybe some greens and uh, make a few spots in the in the pavement to just bring more visual interest to it. Uh, one thing I do like to do when I'm building these things is to set up the plane or set up whatever I'm going to put on there just so I can uh, visualize it better in my head what I want to do with it next. 
so like if I decided to put uh, a bunch of wash here, you're really not going to see it because it's going to be covered up. So it's going to be almost of a waste of my time to put it there. Although the guy may put a different plane on here at some point. So it may not be, uh, you know, that big of a deal. But just to get a better idea of how it's going to look. So there we go. All right. Well, I'm going to get the plane off here. I'm going to get some washes made up and then we'll go over and uh, kind of give you my game plan and show you how I'm going to add a little bit more visual interest to this. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that concrete. So see you in a sec. All right. So um, the first step when you're doing this kind of stuff is to get a nice cup of coffee and start drinking it. Ugh. Mm. Second step is to get some oil paints. Now I've got a couple different colors. I've got smoke, which what I which is what I use to uh, to darken up and bring out some of that detail. And I've also got this uh, field gray, which is a, a grayish green, but it's actually pretty dark. You can see there. It's not like it's not like what it uh, looks like on the outside. It's actually pretty dark. And then I've got some shadow brown, which is a real dark brown with. Uh, uh, it's. I think it came in like a, a kit that was uh, used for painting flesh tones and faces. So what I've started doing is these areas where I've got a big deep crevice, I'm going to add in some of this like moss and stuff. So in order to kind of tie it in all together, I'm going to take some of this field green or whatever it is, a field green. This field gray, it's green. I'm just going to take some mineral spirits and then these areas where I'm going to put a lot of that moss, I'm just going to come in here with some mineral spirits and you know how you kind of see the green stuff growing on old concrete? That's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm just going to take my field gray and I'm just going to come in here and get some of this in here like so. Because I got a flat coat. Now, this is an acrylic flat coat. Keep that in mind. Anytime I use oil paints, I've, I've got an acrylic underneath it. Okay. I'm going to take the same brush. Get it a little wet. And then I'm just going to come in here and play with it. And disperse some of that green. Just like so. I do want it a little darker in some areas. And once it dries, you can come back and, and re-wet your, your brush with some mineral spirits and, and take away and blend it in some more. So it's, it's uh, when you watch a lot of my videos, you'll notice that I'm just kind of playing with it and doing stuff. And it's, you know, that's what you got to do. You just got to got to do it till you're happy with what you got. And you can always fix anything, just about. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'll probably come in and blend this in a little bit more. Like this. Just so I have a softer edge. And then I can add some in the middle of it. Uh, you know, just kind of play around with it. But I really want to just add add this green, kind of this green flavor to the areas where I'm going to be putting a lot of that moss. Um, also, what I've got is this dark brown. <clears throat> and I'm making a little bit of a wash, and I'm coming in and adding just a little bit of brown to some of these. Some of these recesses. I'm not doing all of them this way, but I'm just picking out different areas. And I'm going to do the same thing with that uh, smoke color as well. So again, I'm not making, I don't want to make it look like a, a grid of just one color. Uh, I, I, I want to kind of spread out the color and let uh, each different color kind of have its own little thingamadilly. Like so. And I think this is going to give it a little bit more visual interest. So I am just going to play around with this. And then I'll come back and I will probably do some more stuff with the, like the green 
right along the edge here because I am going to put some of this, uh, uh, not necessarily moss, but some of this uh, greenery, this uh, tufts of graph, grass right along the top here. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'm going to get on with this. And at least you get the idea of what I'm, what I'm thinking in my head. And then uh, I'll probably throw a flat coat on it and then we'll get ready to put some greenery on and finish this thing up. All right, fellas, I am putting down some grass and I've got a bunch of different types of grasses and mosses. Now, I've never actually used these products until now. And, uh, you know, they're, they're different. I've usually just added static grass, which is I've got a static grass applicator. I'd lay down the glue, put my loose grass in and I'd shake it and it makes kind of a mess. But this is this is kind of neat. I'm not sure. We'll see how it turns out. But um Never used these before, but we're trying them. And how I'm doing this is these come in little clumps, as you can see here. And this is going to be the main grass that I use along the edge and any, any place where I want like a lot of grass to show. Now I've got some darker stuff, which I'm not real fond of. I just don't really care for it. Um, and then the shorter stuff, which almost looks like a thick moss. And then I've got all these little mosses right here, which I'll probably mainly use these right along the uh, in the creases but if you can look here it's got like a like I, I would guess it's like some kind of glue when they when they when they made these and I'm just taking my wood glue with a toothpick and I'm going along and I'm adding a little bit of wood glue now this is somewhat adhesive but I don't see the it uh, it's not that sticky so I can't see it staying on through shipping. <laughs> so we're gonna try the wood glue. And all you do is put a little bit of wood glue on there and then set it into place. And hopefully that will stay. Kinda got some stuff clumped up here. And we'll test this and see how well these stick on. I'll try to pull these off whenever it uh, whenever it dries, just to see how well they stay in place. So I'm gonna pull off a little clump here. And I'm gonna insert this, these smaller ones. A little bit more glue on there. Now more glue is not necessarily better because you don't want the glue to get up in the grass and start messing stuff up. So with one of these big ones, I'm just gonna insert it in some of these holes to make it look like it's coming through. And it's just gonna be a matter of laying these out a piece at a time and getting something that I think is somewhat pleasing to the eye. And that is all there is to it. And then the moss, I'll do the same way, just along the creases. And um, hopefully it turns out okay. I don't know. <laughs> I never use this stuff. So, all right. See you when it's finished. All righty, it's finished, guys. Let's take a look at it. I will try not to make you sick. I will try to hold the camera steady. But since this is so big, this is the best way I could figure out how to do it. So there it is. I uh, finished it up last night. The glue and the grass is all dry. I spent a couple hours laying down the grass. It doesn't look like a lot of grass, but putting each one of those individually glued down, <laughs> it took a while. It was, it was interesting. So I'd never worked with this grass stuff before. And like I said, the only grass I'd ever used was a static grass that, you know, it makes a mess. And, and it's it, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, you know, again, I'm not the world's best base or diorama builder but uh for you know the picture that the guy sent me of what he wanted i think i came pretty darn close we'll take a look at this now the grass is in there pretty tight i tried pulling some out with my fingers but you know the grass is short and my fingers are fat and stubby so um you know if i got in there with tweezers i could probably pull them out but hopefully those will withstand shipping <clears throat> um the paracord I ended up just dipping that in my morning coffee to de-whiten it and to make it look a little more old-timey. But uh, there we go. I am pretty happy with it. I think the concrete turned out pretty cool. Uh, 
I'm walking like a ninja. You guys can't see it, but I am walking like a ninja, so I'm trying not to make the camera move. Every time I, I do a moving shot, everybody's like, you're gonna be sick, I can't watch that. <laughs> so there it is, fellas. I'll flash up some pictures, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode, which I'm not sure what I'm gonna be building, but I'm pretty sure it will be a German jet. So, see you on the next one.